In this presentation, we are going to look at how to calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient. So the question here is as follows. The height of a boy was observed at seven different ages. Comment on the relationship between height and age over this period of time and calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient for this data set. Now, I'm going to start, for the sake of brevity, I'm going to just concentrate on calculating the um, Pearson uh, correlation. But just as a remark, actually, how would one sort of assess... Uh, the relationship in the first instance, one would use the scatter plot. So use this drop a scatter plot just to sort of assess the data. And what one should see is a strong positive linear relationship, something like that. Again, it's just for the sake of brevity, I'm not going to do it now. So moving on, what we're going to do is calculate the correlation, uh, Pearson correlation coefficient. So uh, what we have to do here is use this formula here. Now I've used a uh, very much, a uh, very long form here. But this is the uh, uh, the correlation coefficient. This is the estimate for correlation, the true correlation between x and y. And what it is comprised of is three sums of squares identities. And th there they are, they're listed at the bottom. So I'm gonna call these the sums of squares identities. Okay, so SXY, SXX, and SYY. So this is a formula for each of them, and they're all based on, essentially they're all based on uh, different types of summations. What I'm gonna do is just a sort of a reduced version of each formula here. Uh, that's the proper way to uh, specify each formula, each of the formulae, but just for the sake of uh, simplicity, I'm just gonna rewrite them using very minimal notation. There we are. Okay, so we have to compute the sum of x, the sum of y, the sum of x times y, the sum of x squared, and the sum of y squared. I mean, I'm gonna do each of those again. Now, essentially what I've just done there, essentially what I've done is just like removed all the subscripts and superscripts just to make it a little bit easier to read so you get the general the general sense of what to do so let's begin essentially what we need to do is comp compute all of the following here the sum of x so for each uh, va uh, pairing of x and y what we're going to do is uh, multiply them and then add up all the all the the, the products for each case the, the sum of x essentially just add up all the x values all the y values Square all the x values and then add them up. Square all the y values and then add them up. And again, as, just as I mentioned at the start, I'll just say, say, say this again. Uh, multiply each um, x value by the corresponding y value and then add them all up. So let's begin that. Uh, let's bring in the data set again. So the sum of x, let's do that one first. Sum of xi is 6 plus 7 plus 8 oops there we are plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 plus 11 plus 12 it's just a bit of calculator work essentially and the answer to that is uh, 63 okay the sum of y the sum of the y values 108 plus 115 plus 120 and so on the answer to that is 885 okay so those two are straightforward enough but what we're going to do now is actually we'll have a go at this one here the sum of xi times yi so in each case what we're going to do is multiply the corresponding values out and then add them all up together so that is 6 times 108 plus 7 times 115 plus 8 times 120. There's a lot of laborious calculator work here, but I think you get the gist of it there now. And we add all of those up, and we will get uh, 8,136. So the three values that from uh, we've looked at so far, 63, 885, and uh, 8,136. So we've this one done, we've this one done, and we've this one done. 
So uh, all that remains to be done now is to square them, to square each car, uh, each value of x and each value of y, and then add them, uh, sum all of those up. Let's do that. So what we're going to do now is these, the the last two here. Again, the uh, numbers can get quite long. The sum of x i squared is as follows. So this is six squared plus seven squared plus eight squared and so on. That's equal to 36 plus 49 plus 64 and so on. And that is equal to, bear with me, just write it down, 595. Okay. Sum of y squared. So essentially we square all of the values of y and then add them all up. That is equal to 108 squared plus 115 squared plus 120 squared and so on. Again, a lot of laborious calculations, but you just have to go through them. One, uh, so uh, 112,935 should be the answer to that one. Okay, so that let's just sort of uh, check all our answers again. So the sum of x, uh, the sum of the case-wise products x, the each corresponding value of x, uh, x and y, uh, add up all of those values, and we get eight one three six. The sum of the x values is sixty three. The sum of the y values eight hundred eighty five. And where's the rest in there? The sum of the squared, the sum of the squares of the x values, five hundred ninety five. The sum of the squares of the y values, one hundred and twelve thousand nine hundred thirty five. Okay. Now, let's move on to the next bit. What we're going to do is we have computed all those values. Now we can actually compute the sums of squares identities again. Uh, so we can just concentrate on that now. So we found, uh, just like checking over our solutions there, we found that this value here is 8136. The sum of the x values was 63. And the sum of the y values was 885. And just as a remark, uh, going back, I'm just going to flick back here for a second. We have seven points in the data set. There we are, seven points, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There are seven of those uh, pairs of observations. So we're going to divide this, n is equal to seven. Okay. Uh, that actually works out to be 100, uh, sorry, 171. Again, a bit of calculator work. The sum uh, S of XX is the sum of X squared. That's 595. Minus the sum, minus X, uh, the sum of X to be squared, uh, which was 63 to be squared, all over 7. Again, a bit of calculator work here. That works out to be 28. Sum of y squared minus the sum of y to be squared divided by n. That is 112,935 minus 885 squared all over 7. Again, these numbers are usually not uh, too easy to work with. I make that to be 1,045.71. Okay, so let's just put all of those together. There we have it there. So those are our calculations. Now, we've done all the hard work. And boy, was it hard. And I've, I've sort of ran through it there, but it actually takes a good 10 minutes to get through it. Although in an, in an exam you would be given, you should be giving yourself twenty five minutes to go through this and double check it. So, anyway, uh, we have all the sums of squares identities calculated now. What we have to do is find the correlation coefficient. By the way, just as a quick remark, uh, what happens in in the exams is generally you get to reuse these calculations again in other parts of the same question. So it actually would sort of speed things up immensely. 
Now we found, uh, just going back here a second, we found that the sum of x, s of x, y was 171. Let's go back to blue here. 171. And the sum of uh, the square root of 28 times 1045.71. So that would work out to be approximately 0 0.9993. So the correlation coefficient is 0 0.9993. And that indicates very strong positive linear relationship. Okay, that ends our presentation.